there's an unfortunate but very common confusion in the way that the word mutation is used when talking about how populations change over time. People will often say that a population mutates, or that mutation has caused a population to change, but not only are both of these statements completely wrong, using them can actually make people misunderstand how evolution works at a fundamental level. To see why this is, however, first we need to define and distinguish between three different important terms, mutation, polymorphism, and substitution. First, mutation. Mutation is when an allele in an individual changes. This is a single, one-time event. If the mutation is somatic, no big deal. Essentially, the worst that can happen is cancer for that individual. But if it occurs in the germline, it may be inherited, which can lead to bigger consequences. I should point out that a mutation is also a noun to describe an allele that is different from the wild type. But in this video, I'm focusing on how the word mutation is misused to describe evolutionary change at the population level. Second, polymorphism. A polymorphism is when a population has multiple alleles segregating at a particular locus. This involves multiple copies of the mutant allele, but each of these would typically be the product of a single germline mutation in an ancestor some generations before. This term describes the state of a population, or the frequency of an allele, depending on how it's being used. Finally, substitution. A substitution is when the wild type allele in a population changes from an original one to a new one. This term is used to describe when the standard allele for a population has changed. Of course, this new allele is the product of a single mutation which led to a polymorphism in which the allele increased in frequency to fixation, 100%, or more technically, a frequency or proportion of one. It can be helpful to look at this visually. How do populations evolve anyway? How should we think about evolution when we're focusing on molecular evolution, the evolution of the alleles that a population has at a locus? First, let's imagine a population with a bunch of individuals which are all homozygous for the same allele, represented here with the symbol capital A. I'm showing this process for a diploid population, but the exact same idea applies to haploid organisms like bacteria as well. All individuals are homozygous, and the frequency of the capital A allele is 1. Sometime later, a mutation occurs in one of the individuals, which changes the capital A allele to a new allele represented by the lowercase a. Obviously, we're not talking about actual letters or restricting our thoughts to adenine or anything. The two letters represent any two versions of the same gene that differ in some way at the DNA level, two alleles at the same locus. Most novel alleles are lost due to random chance, but sometimes they increase in frequency. When this happens, then the population would look more like this. Multiple copies of the mutant allele in the population, all of which are copies descended from that one original. Keep in mind that it's not more mutation events happening, it's reproduction of that first mutation giving rise to multiple copies of itself generations into the future. When an allele is present at an appreciable frequency, we call it a polymorphism, and we would say that the population is polymorphic at that locus. Sometimes this process will continue and a previously rare allele can become the new common allele while the original allele becomes the rare one. This can occur when the mutant allele is advantageous due to natural selection, but it can also occur just by random chance via a phenomenon called genetic drift. Either way, the polymorphism persists. If the process continues until completion, until the lowercase a allele reaches a frequency of one, we term this final step fixation and we say that the allele has fixed in the population. Now the population has a new wild type allele that all the individuals are homozygous for. The population has changed from everyone having the capital A allele to everyone having the lowercase a allele. The correct word for this change in the wild type allele is substitution. The allele represented by the lowercase a has substituted the allele represented by the capital A in the population. The substitution is the evolutionary change in the population, while the mutation was just the initial spark that made it possible. It's best to use the word substitution because it reminds us of the entire process that has occurred. Just using the word mutate has real potential to cause us to misunderstand how evolution works. It's worth focusing on this point. Populations don't mutate, only individuals do. Unfortunately, lots of people, even professionals, will say that a population has mutated when they really mean that a population has acquired a novel substitution. This can lead to confusion. For example, mutation rates are the rates of mutation per generation in individual genomes. These values can be used to predict cancer risk or carcinogenic effects. The hazardous chemicals known as mutagens increase the mutation rate, and that's bad because somatic mutations can cause cancer. We don't really worry about whether carcinogens increase the rate of evolution, though. Meanwhile, substitution rates are the rates of change in the wild-type genome, the rate of evolution of the genes. These are used to compare different species and make molecular clocks. 
Substitution rates are used to measure the rate of evolution in academic fields such as anthropology and systematics, but also in applied fields like molecular epidemiology where we use them to track diseases. Mutation and substitution are completely different processes and shouldn't be mixed up, which is exactly what happens when we use the wrong words. This makes sense for super technical uses, but is this something that students and regular biologists need to worry about? Well, obviously the answer is yes, or I wouldn't have made this video. The reason to worry about this is because saying or writing the incorrect words can make us think incorrectly. Our thoughts are shaped by our words. Have you ever found that when you can't find the right word for something, all of a sudden your brain comes to a halt? That's because our brains use words to think, and if we want to think clearly and correctly, we need to use the right words. This is more powerful than you may think. The entire field of propaganda is based on guiding which words people use in order to control how they think. If we use the wrong words, we think the wrong way. We propaganda our own brains into thinking the wrong way. Saying that a population mutated is wrong because only individuals mutate. But if we say that a population mutates, we can mess up our thinking. The first example of a specific problem this can cause is that saying a population mutated can lead to a kind of weird magical thinking where the individual's genomes are all connected somehow. For example, in the movie Looper, humans are evolving to have telekinesis and they try to explain it as a biological process, not magic. But this trait has become common in only a couple of generations, which doesn't make sense if it's a mutation that arose and started spreading the way that they describe it. That's way too fast. If you want to write a story where people magically gain powers, that's fine. But in a scenario that tries to follow the scientific rules of evolution like this one does, the idea that populations mutate clearly misled the writers. That's not how biology works. That's not how evolution works. That's not how any of this works. We should never use words that make us think things that aren't accurate. A second example of how using the word mutate when we should use substitute or evolve is that focusing only on mutation when talking about evolution misses the fact that selection or evolution occurred. For example, new bacterial and viral strains don't all mutate together. The mutations arise in single events and increase in frequency due to selection, which takes multiple generations. If people think that the mutations are all parallel, then measures like quarantining or distancing, which are designed to slow the evolution of the disease by isolating new mutations, don't make sense. If people understood evolution better, then these measures would make more sense to people. Unfortunately, the news media tends to avoid using the E word, evolution, because of fears of offending their religious audience. That means that they usually use the word mutate instead, which just perpetuates this misconception about how diseases and everything else actually change over time. Populations don't evolve by mutating. They evolve by experiencing mutations that become polymorphisms that increase in frequency and fix to generate substitutions. As always, a PDF of this summary screen is available on the Evolution Examples website. If you found this useful, feel free to share with anyone else you know who would benefit from it. Also, like and subscribe to easily find this channel again and see new videos.